Greetings old world explorers. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at the city of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. And we are up here in the prairies. You can see it's one of the major cities um, in the province. Now let's look at the population demographics. And we really have a, a bare bones start to this um, city. You see the population basically next to nothing. Um, and then modern day goes down to 246, 246,000. But then what we're looking at is basically in this area of time. Um, let's get to some of the visuals. And of course, in my old world explorations, we like to take a peek into the past and poke holes in the historical narrative. So we're going to start with this one, the Beesboro Hotel. Supposedly built between 1930 and 1932. Opened 1935, some sort of delay because of uh, the, the Great Depression. All this historical narrative really starts to read more like a, like a thin backstory the more you dig into it. Here, supposedly a construction photo. Does that look like a construction photo to you? This one looks like looks like somebody took the ruler out and just drew a bunch of lines, um, keeping the outline of the building intact. So. I have trouble believing that one. And then of course you have these these old type of construction photos that basically looks like a Lego where they get this, the frame and then they just fill in the block, the gaps. Um, and then it's, it, the final product looks like this. Right, and this, this again reminded me, it's one of the railway hotels so you have the Chateau Frontenac in Quebec and you have uh, Victoria's got the Empress. Um, Edmonton's got one, Laurier in Ottawa, so all riddled through Canada we have the railway narrative and the hotels supposedly throwing these magnificent um, structures up. And really this, if, if this were somewhere in, uh, in Europe, uh, Austria or Czech Republic, and when we told you um, that it's built in the 16th, 1700s, you would have no trouble believing that, but because it's Saskatchewan, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, we have to believe that this was put up in the 30s. And another uh, construction photo, again, I don't know, hard to trust these. Again, looking like Lego, right? Throw the blocks up till you get to the top. Hmm. And then let's look at what else uh, this uh, town had to offer at the time. Remember the population, basically nothing. Um, in about 1910, we're looking at, uh, let's double check that. So 1910, we're looking at about 12,000 people, and 1920, we're about double that. So, And most of what you're looking at here, I would say, are, are comes from that era. This one you can tell in 1912, I believe, it's in the reverse. Okay. Um, definitely looking like a bit of a mud flood uh, resuscitation going on here with this community. Um, early roots of this community having to do with the temperance movement. Um, people who believe that alcohol was a scourge on society and wanted to start their own community. And then of course you have the railways um, taking root in the early 1900s and a uh, university being chosen in this town to be built. The University of Saskatoon, I believe. And of course we look at the old buildings with the basement windows. And of course being on the prairies we have the um, the grain agricultural narrative. This is Robin Hood flower. Um, even when we take a closer look at these you got way too many stories and you get that decoration going on up here. So it's a brick structure and part of the narrative. I think Quaker Oats showing us the same thing. You have the brick structure here. This looking newer, gable roof style, very simple build, something more to be expected from the time. Uh, this is less typical um, as far as simplicity goes in a, in a town of um, only really a handful of thousand people. Uh, who's doing the building again on these? My question always is who did the building? Uh, also take a look at the curb work infrastructure. And you're going to see a lot of muddy streets um, with all the tracks in them. Um, you see it here as well, uh, and I have um, hypothesized that a lot of these muddy streets 
um, have that brickwork underneath with the uh, embedded rail lines from the old world and uh, they're just covered in a layer of mud whether it hasn't been cleaned out yet or it's actually left there intentionally for the horses I don't know you have a whole handful of uh, schools coming out of this area you have of course the Masonic Temple um, again early narrative take a look at the vehicle uh, early time frame for the narrative right so you do the math you let me know what you think uh, I, d I don't know I think uh, there's a digging out from the old world and the resetting of the narrative um, I guess it's looking back it's easy for us to make allowances um, to fill in gaps um, they say that's what our brain does, right? When you, when you don't have a clear picture, your brain fills in the gaps. Well, they've wired our brains to fill in the gaps. Um, but they... I don't... I, it's a stretch, really, the gaps they expect us to fill in. You have the rail car narrative here in uh, Saskatoon. A quick history of Saskatoon rail cars. This is from the Saskatoon Transit. Starting in 1913, the first municipal rail car. They have all sorts of things like how much it cost for a ticket, how many people rode on it. Like you saw the population there um, in the first year, they're saying 34, 3.4 million people rode it. 1913 in a city of um, 12,000 12, people. So um, they're saying basically half the town used the streetcars on the first day. And then they go through the time, how much they, how much the trolley drivers made. Uh, I just want to get to the end of the narrative. We have the buses coming into play, and then the end of the last streetcar here in 1951, the last streetcar completes its final run. So you have a time frame of about 35 years ish um, for these streetcars to have been in existence in this remote location. And of course, you have these old world structures on what we call the main streets. Uh, brick structures, decorative fronts, dental moldings, cornices, very fancy. All part of what we in this community suggest is the remnants of a previous civilization, a previous humanity that has basically been stamped over um, by, I don't know, for lack of a better term, uh, unsavory inheritors through the through the faiths, the religious sectors, through the governments, secret societies, things like that. Here you're getting a bird's eye view of uh, one of the streets. You have the horse and buggy narrative and you have the cars side by side. And we don't really have the street cars um, in this picture here. You'll see in some of these they're making a case for the need for street cars. But it's interesting because you already have um, motor cars in the narrative. And they're deciding, while well, it's all, everything is side by side. Here's a post office with the basement windows. Everything being side by side, they're saying that we need to uh, implement street cars to make our little town of 12,000 people run lots with their car home. Of course, you have a bank. Old world structures, mud flooded, dug back out, repurposed. That's my suggestion. Uh, Empire Hotel, several hotels, several stories tall, basement. The narrative repeats itself. We have a school, bell tower. Who's building these? Who's doing the construction in these small communities? Sure would like to know why we need streetcars. Here you have the narrative building. Look, we have a bustling street, uh, obviously having to predate 1913 because according to this, they don't have the streetcars yet. So, you have all this infrastructure, firmly intact, curved corners, columns, uh, and you have a cry out for streetcars because you just have so much horse and buggy and car action in this bustling metropolis of 12,000 people, give or take. And here we have the streetcars in existence. Streetcars not looking new. Whenever we see the narrative of the streetcars, they are not looking new whatsoever. The tracks don't look new. Here you get a sense of that. Here you have the track, the streetcar. Also observe in these photographs the high curb here. Uh, I don't know if there's been a digging out. It's hard to see in this one. Um, I do have one photo where you will see the brickwork. So a city like uh, Saskatoon 
not really expecting that type of intricate brickwork in the streets. And in most of these photos, you're going to have it covered with dirt, so you won't see much. But this looking a bit suspect, for sure. The depth there. Old. This looking old. Streetcar. Not looking like it was just introduced. I believe it's a police station. The King George Hotel. One, two, three, four, five. Five stories? Six. Very decorative. Small town. The Albany Hotel. Another, yet another hotel with basement windows. And here we have the, in 1913, which we saw on the website, was supposedly the first year that these were in existence. So we are to infer that this setup here has just been installed, and this is a photograph of the newly constructed uh, rail cars. You tell me. Does that look like it was it's brand new or does this infrastructure look it's been, look like it's been a part of this area for a while of course we can't verify much of this we have to dig deep into our past most people can't even figure out who their great grandparents um, are or what they did so we are a, a species with amnesia for the most part and then when we do assume we know what was going on 100 150 years ago it's a, so much conjecture we really need to back off from the knowing and understand that we don't know I think. and it goes for everybody all, all all history has been distorted history written by the winners the oppressors um, I don't think you can claim to um, be oppressed and have been oppressed in the past and also claim to know your true history and your true origin we are a species of the intention and of course the brainwashed to maintain that amnesia, feed us with all this junk, literally and figuratively, junk, entertainment, bread and circuses. We have a brewery, of course, turn the bread into a, a drinkable uh, beverage. <laughs> yeah, the narrative repeats itself. University of Saskatchewan, old brick buildings. When we have schools like this. Does this make sense to you? Remember the population at the time. Who were they getting to build these? Why did they have to put these uh, crenellations on top? What's the point of that? Right. Another school with the bell on top. Basement windows. So Saskatchewan, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Maybe you've never heard of it. Maybe you've heard of it. Didn't really care to know much about it. Here we have, I'm not sure, is this the digging out? Um, is this uh, a renovation? Uh, interesting. These are part of the uh, um, historical narrative when you look into some of the history of the area. I do claim that any of these uh, archives, they've been distorted and twisted for a reason to distort history. Um, some people think that's a paranoid conspiracy. I think the evidence speaks for itself. Of course, the ch church narrative. Buildings such as this. Who built these? When was it built? Old City Hall. Uh, repurposed. Par apparently, was a school. King George School, I believe. A little snapshot of the town at the time. Interesting. With the church here in front. Even that. Even the the way they're building here, the two-story with the gable. Um, Dormer coming off the side. This is a pretty uh, detailed building for. I mean, this is a horse and buggy here, so we're going back pretty far. Um, there seems to be much more to the story. They really just kick off the narrative of this town in, uh, in 1901 or what, 1903, whatever it was there. It just feels like a um, like a hard start date, which we've seen in other um, areas as well, um, where the narrative, historical narrative, is just thin. They give us a backstory of the uh, uh, the native people in the area having existed there for 11,000 years, but then they just have like, okay, European settlement, this is what happened. It just is, it doesn't, it doesn't wash for me. There's more to the story from all sides that we're not uh, seeing. Here again, you have that rail car. And, and does, I mean, feels out of place. I would not have expected a 
town like this in its region to have even incorporated the rail car into its uh, infrastructure. Just not enough time in the historical narrative for it to make sense. Of course, you have these old churches, stone churches. Or just a little bird's eye view. So I think uh, definitely mud flood action going on in this area. Um, a resetting of the narrative. All the guilty parties involved. Uh, the religions, the uh, government. You name it. So just another example of a distorted history. And a historical narrative that uh, doesn't hold up to scrutiny. YMCA. Why? why? Why were the YMCA's such amazing looking buildings with the, uh, the basements here again, early, early time period. This is looking very similar to the last building. At first I wasn't sure if it was the same building. I'm saying it's a military hospital. There are some differences here. But again, for such a small community, it doesn't make sense. These would take quite some time to construct. Not enough time in the narrative for them to be building all of this. Here you have that muddy street look, which I uh, I propose is a, um, a coating of mud on top of uh, already existing infrastructure, like a cover up going on there. It's a hotel though. And this is a little screenshot I took, um, they're calling it, I think this was, they called it a subway, it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, but having to do with part of the old uh, infrastructure, but you can see here, I hope you can see here, um, evidence of brick, it's brick streets, that's what it looks like to me. So I suspect all that part of the narrative was firmly intact here. Okay, so just a quick peek at Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. Very remote location, but still showing a lot of signs of the old world, the reset narrative firmly intact here. Thanks for joining me.